Yeah. What about you? Just say you just got finished eating. So uh, where where you at? Where, what part of the world are you at right now? Oh, uh, down here, uh, south of Louisville, Kentucky. Oh, okay, okay. All you have to do is stay a minute, just take your time. The clock is ticking, so stay. All you have to do is stay. Yeah, what's going on, guys? Early morning session today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, we're truck drivers, man. We got to... You know, we can only get it in where we can get it in. And if a person be like, yo, I, I, I'm only available in the morning and I am only available. I'm hoping that you guys are up with me to share this uh, little bit of time that I got. Welcome in the LOM community. Thank you guys so much for coming in. And uh, I am, you know who I am. I'm Lockout Men. And welcome to the Lockout Men podcast, man. What's going on with you guys? Hey, listen, I want you guys to do this for me. If you like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell and that all button. It's easy. It's easy to do. And if you guys want to support me, y'all can support me or any kind of way that you can do it. You know, the cash and the coffee app is in the description below, man. Hook a brother up with some coffee. Right now, I'm drinking some Perrier. Not the real Perrier, just the water Perrier. You know what I'm saying? I also got to check my glucose meter this morning, too. So I got to see what my sugar level is at. But uh, in today's episode, man, I got another interview for you guys. So I want to just go ahead and uh, bring this young man in from uh, I found him on uh, Facebook. I think we reached out to each other uh, probably a few times or something like that. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and spotlight this gentleman right here. My man, Big Money Aaron, in the building. What's going on? What is going on? I don't know. Let's get my day started. Getting your day started, bro. Where where we where where we at in the part of the world, and where are we going today? Oh, uh, down here south of Louisville, Kentucky. Getting ready to head down to pick up a loot. It's going to Maryland. Oh, okay. Maryland, uh, Maryland, Ma Baltimore, Maryland? Or somewhere in Maryland? Uh, more like Hagerstown. Oh. Hagerstown. Oh, jeez. I can't fuck. Nah. That motherfucking pilot over there is so fucking small and shit. And then that, uh, <laughs> And then, yeah. and and then that, uh, and then the only thing that's coming up out of there is the motherfucking TS loads, man. I fucking, I cannot stand tractor supply loads, man. I used to, I used to drive for U.S. Express, and that's all. Every time they'd be like, "Well, uh, we got a load that's going up in the in the bar, I mean, in the Maryland," and I'm going like, "Oh, okay, yeah, Maryland, what's up?" And then all of a sudden, like, "Yo, it's Hagerstown." I'm like, "Man, I don't want to go over there." Because every time I go over there, yeah. <laughs> I always get a load that's coming out, that's going in, that's taking me further into the Northeast, into these boondock ass uh, tractor supplies, man, with the fucked up docks. Man, tell me, it's, yeah. it's, it's not tractor supply you going to, is it? It's, it's somewhere else, right? No, uh, we have some uh, the company I work for has got some pretty big customer accounts we deal with. So that's where I'm going. All right, Aaron, man. All right, so let's... Can't really disclose it. <laughs> All right, man. So let's start, man. So let's start with your... Uh, let's start with your background, your story, man. How did you get uh, How did you get started in trucking, and how, how has the journey been so far? Well, um, my family is... I'm the first generation, so my family was all union carpenters. Uh, that's what I done when I graduated high school. I done that for three years and just got tired of, you know, finishing jobs and getting laid off. And I've always liked to drive. And so funny story is I went to a casino one time with my buddy and I ended up winning a recent, pretty decent amount of money. Then the next week I paid for trucking school. And Get out. 15 you, years later, I am. You a poker player? Uh, more slots. See, man. Oh, Jesus, I wish you would have said slots. Damn, man. What? What <laughs> is the? What is the ore 
or what what is the what is it with slops, man? Because I, I can't fuck with them. I, I really can't. Everybody keep telling me, like, yo, lockout man, go ahead and get slots to try. And I see all when I go into a casino, I see all the, you know, all the people just sitting there and just, you know, just well, back in the day it used to be the hand, you know, you you could pull the hand knob, but these days now it's electronic and you know, you just hit the max bet and just go with that, man. What's the what's the allure of slots for you, man? Uh, I think it's like the excitement, like not knowing what's going to happen, I guess. I'm I kind of have like a trick, like a thing. Like I watch somebody play like a certain slot for a while. Then as soon as they get up and leave, I sit down at it. Right. Right. Man, listen, bro, I will be so fucking pissed. I, I, I'm, <laughs> I, I kid you not, man. I will be so fucking heated if I've been on that motherfucking slot for hours and ain't getting nothing much. I mean, you know, I'm winning here and there, but not as, you know, not the jackpot, not the jackpot or anything like that. And then some little old lady sits her ass down and on a first fucking spin, she gets the damn jackpot. Like, bruh, I will run back and be like, yo, uh, <laughs> You you want to share that because you know I I pretty much got this got, got this slot ready for you, no no no. Everybody come around her and shit. Oh look at that! You hit the jackpot! Oh look at that! So so happy for you! I'm over here in the I'm over here in the cut just seething like the fuck. Sat in that motherfucking chair. Yeah, the, the eyes are definitely on you when the bells are going off. Oh man, I'm telling you, man. That's the, uh, man. Look, that that's why I never. That's why I never play slots because I I don't want to be in that predicament. I'm I'm serious. I I don't want to be yeah. in that. I I don't want to be in that predicament, man. I I don't want. I don't want to sit there. Uh, you know, I and I see people sitting there for like hours and hours and hours. Hell, a lady got up. I I I I was at Mystic Lake up in uh up in uh, Minnesota. I actually seen a lady get up, went and got her daughter or her friend or whatever, went and got her friend to have her friend sit there because somebody it was a couple of other people that was waiting. They <laughs> it, was, it was a couple of other people that was waiting. But she went and got her friend or her daughter or whatever. It was another lady to sit there and hold the slot machine for about a good 35 minutes while she went out to 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 re up. And then she came back and, you know, kept, you know, and got back at it, man. But, yeah, I, I'm a poker player. I, uh, I I play poker. You know what I'm saying? I uh, I go out to. Uh, Canterbury, you know, once a month or twice a month. And uh, since they, since, you know, since they started back, I, uh, yo, good morning. Uh, since they started back, I went back out there to, you know, Canterbury and start playing live poker. It's different now, man. It's, it's crazy. COVID season got, got the, got the casinos fucked up though, for real, man. It's like they took, you know, oh, yeah. you know how social, like social, it it would be so social there, but now with with the plexiglass and uh, and the six feet away rule, it, it it just makes it so antisocial now, man. So you say you uh, so you just went in there. Yeah, I, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I doubt a lot of uh, casinos are putting out any jackpots at the moment either. <laughs> You say the jack. You say trying to build that money back up to give away. You say you you say the jackpots ain't ain't hitting like they uh like they hitting now, huh? <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Um, what uh? So you hit the jackpot. Uh, you you what what casino you went to to uh to uh hit the jackpot, bro? Uh, but now it's called a uh, Hollywood Casino down in Lawrenceburg, Indiana. But then it was a uh, Argosy Casino. Oh, okay. I've been there. I know. I know where you're talking about. Okay. 
Okay, they uh, the, yeah. I, uh, yeah, Hollywood brought Agassi out, and they, you know, they, yeah. they was in the midst of uh, they was in the midst of changing their names and all like that. So how's your so you 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 won you went you you went to school right? So you went to truck driving school right? Yeah, I went to yeah I went to a it was a community college that had like a truck driving academy. Yeah, that's the same route I went, you know, Tri C Community College. Shout out to them. Um so how long have you how how long you been driving so far? This coming March will be fifteen years. Fifteen years. Get out, yep. bro. That's a milestone. Congratulations, <laughs> man. Damn. Congratulations for that. Appreciate it. 15 years, man. So throughout your so throughout the 15 years, man, how how has uh the industry changed through your eyes? Um changed a lot since I first started, you know, especially with you know the commodity and the people that help you out here like, now anymore it's like everybody's for themselves nobody talks to you tries to help you out or anything every once in a while you'll get them you know old timers or some people that you know don't care to lend a hand but for the most part it's as far as that point of you know view it's changed a lot is that do you do you think that's because of of the the new wave of new jacks uh new jack drivers that's coming in and they they treating the game some kind of way that that just makes it a pet peeve for for older drivers uh old school drivers to you know to now just not give a fuck i think that's some i think that's most of it um i think a lot of people now like treat this as just a paycheck um instead of like a you know a career or something like that but I think a lot of it has to do too, you know, with the way the violence is. Like you can't really trust anybody anymore. Yeah, it's is 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 kind of crazy that you know that the first thing I, I I just got finished doing a podcast, and a, a lot of the guys, a lot of the people that that is getting into the industry, uh, for whatever reason, one of those reasons is not for the love of the industry no more. You know, I mean, back then, you know, truck drivers had had a thing about themselves, you know, when they they had a cert, certain professionalism, certain f family type atmosphere. But but now with the new jacks that's coming in, you know, they they can't make this kind of money nowhere else. You know what I'm saying? You got felons coming in the game. Yeah. You know, you got felons coming in the game. They they changing the face of of trucking. You got uh you you got different genders coming into the game. They changing the face of trucking, and and you know and the money is 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 changed the face of trucking. You know, it's not as much money as being made as it was, but it's as much now because nobody nobody haven't seen or or made that kind of money. You know what I'm saying? And and trucking gives yeah, them, exactly. you know, gives them the opportunity that they would never get nowhere else. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right, Twisted Music, what's going on, man? How you feel today? Thank you for being here. All right, man. So overall, you know, throughout your 15 years in trucking, man, Overall, has it been smooth? What were some of the struggles that 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 came along the way, man? Um, I've been pretty lucky with everything. I had really no. It kind of like all just come to me like pretty smooth. Like it was almost like you know I was born to do it or something. <laughs> come on now, you did not. You was not <laughs> born with the shifter in your hand, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I uh I grew up on a farm and stuff, so I was kind of used to the you know the counter backing and the counter steering and all that stuff with tractors and wagons and so it's kind of come natural, I guess. Okay, okay. What you was doing before you got into trucking and before you hit that jackpot? 
And let me ask you this. Let me revert back oh. to the jackpot. Do you still have some of the jackpot? <laughs> you still have some of the money from the jackpot? No. Half of that went to truck driving school. <laughs> then you went back. Then you went back and but tried I've, to see it. You I've been it a again. few times since then, but I haven't had no luck. And you gave you gave it all back like I did? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> oh, man. So what uh so what about so what 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 about what I just asked you? Uh, damn, I just it, it, fucking mind blank. <laughs> um, hold on, right? I was in uh I was in the carpenters union for oh, yeah, there you go three and a half years. Then when I got out of that, I just worked for a local carpenter that built houses for about a year and a half, and that's when I went to trucking school because I was you know getting laid off all the time and we finished jobs and just got old. So you, uh, so you just figured, you just feel that, you know, do, do you have a family? Like, are you married or do you have kids or anything like that? Yeah, I have a wife. Uh, we've been married for 11 years and I have a eight year old son and a five year old daughter. Oh, okay. Okay. So, you know, just one day you and your wife got together and you just said, look, I'm about to go into truck driving and uh, try to make a better life for for my family. How how did your wife feel about you uh, getting into truck driving? Um, I was already doing it when we met. So she was her grandpa drove for thirty years, and that's what he retired from. So he was she was kind of you know used to the being gone and the lifestyle and stuff, and just come in pretty smooth. I mean, we've had our ups and downs about it, but. You no, know, never caused us to think divorce or split up or nothing. Oh, okay, she's pretty used to it. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. Both uh, my kids, both my kids were born into it. So, so you get a so you get a chance to uh, come home every week or every two weeks. Is there is there is there method to your madness of being out here? Uh, normally it's every two weeks. Um here lately with the covid screwing up vacations and everything else i've been staying out for three to four weeks to take like four or five days off to try to get some stuff done before winter time all right all right well covid season is 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 as as uh has fucked up a lot of has fucked up a lot of things out here man what has uh what has covid affected you and 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 the way you drive now how how has it affected you and your family and your your driving the truck uh hasn't hasn't done anything for the negative i've actually made more money this year than i've ever have because um the company i drive for um we haul you know ups account a walmart account and so we got like all that online stuff that we deal with that keeping us like non-stop like crazy busy. Okay. Okay. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. So, you know, truck drivers or, you know, people that become truck drivers, they get into it for like different reasons, different goals and stuff like that. What what are your goals as a truck driver? Um, my plans right now is to do five more years and get out of it and do something local. That way I can at least enjoy my kids teenage life all right all right so out here man you know we you know we truck drivers we we get pissed off like very easily you know what i'm saying it's just like you said you know what we talked about earlier about how trucking change within the last within your last 15 of driving so what are what what are your trucking pet peeves out here um, my biggest one is people not knowing how to use a, an on-ramp onto an interstate. It drives me crazy when they come down the same speed as you or they are slowing down or speeding up and cut you off. That one's my biggest one. My other one is uh, you know, people you know, coming all the way from the left of the interstate, clear to the right, cutting you off to get off of an exit ramp. 
All right. Yeah, that that could be definitely a big pet peeve for a lot of people because when they come on, especially for people that don't know how to drive, they 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 come on, they slow down, they speed up, they cut you off, and it's just so irritating, man, that uh that they come on and do that crazy shit, man. Well, let me ask you this, man. If you uh have you ever been in a, you know, being a truck driver? No, like that. You've been out for 15 years and you are male. So, you know, we us males, we look at we look at things different than, you know, females out here. So have you ever have you ever felt vulnerable uh, in any situation that you may have been into while driving? Uh, no, not really. Um, like I. I don't really I get messed with a whole lot, I guess. So I'm kind of a, you know, bigger guy and covered in tattoos and I don't really get messed with. Not not to be one not, not to be one to be messed with. That's what's up. What about uh what's some precautions you take out here to better protect yourself while while you're out here driving? Uh taking it slow on the highway and when I'm, you know, going through dark, like, parking lots and stuff, always keeping, you know, my eyes and my head moving. That way, you know, somebody won't sneak up behind you or something like that. Okay, that's what's up. TJ Jones uh, commented, he says, uh, first couple of years suck pay-wise, but now it's glorious with a lot of risks. So the first year, the first the first year for you, what was what was the first year like? uh for you when you got out here to uh to learn uh the, to learn the ways of the truck driver did was your training uh with with a company trainer was it good was it bad what was your experience with uh training out here when you was coming out yeah when i first when i first got out of trucking school i went and um worked for swift and i had a really good trainer um he helped me, you know, he had very good patience with me and uh, just helped me in everything he could and stuff. And, I mean, the pay wasn't, I was, you know, all the way at the bottom of the totem pole and everything else. But I ran good miles with Swift, a lot of, you know, coast-to-coast stuff. But I just worked there for eight months, got my experience in, and then I moved on. So, was you know, they, you know, Swift gets a lot of bad press. I mean, you know, Swift gets a lot of bad press, but Swift is actually a good company to 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 get your to get your license and also to get your to get your training. It's just that the trainers, yeah. it's just that some of the trainers there suck. You know what I'm saying? And the drivers that, you know, some of the drivers that come out that's not trained pop, I mean, that's not trained properly, gives the company a like a horrible bad name, a bad reputation, man. What do you got to say about what do you got to say about Swift being that you was there for eight months? Uh, and being that you was there for eight months, why did you, you know, what why did you leave after eight months? Um, I just basically went there just to get the experience in and, you know, learn the whole ropes of, you know, the industry and everything. And my plans were to go local, is which is what I've done for a short period of time and kind of missed being on the road. And I went back and I worked for a uh, an owner-operator there by my house on uh heavy equipment and stuff like that. And I worked for him for six years. Okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. So do you have any aspirations of, uh, of, uh, of, of owning your own truck or, uh, you have any aspirations of, uh, leasing the truck or are you, you pretty cool where you at right now? Pretty cool. being a company driver where I'm at right now, but I've always, you know, my dreams always been to, you know, buy my own truck and trailer and, roll down the road all shiny and the big hood like some of these guys <laughs> so was you uh but what, i, I kind of want to do that where i can pay cash with it okay that's what's up so you in the midst of saving up for it now that's that's all that's all right man what about um 
what about back, you know, let's let's go back to school for a second. Did you uh did you learn in the manual or did you 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 get a restriction on your license? I learned in a manual. Uh, yeah, I was in a manual transmission all the way up until four years ago when I came here where I'm at now. What do you how how do you feel about uh how do you feel about trucking nowadays that uh that a lot of the fleets are 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 going uh, automatic. How, how do you feel about that? I mean, it's a good thing, I guess. Um, I like the automatics as far as you know, sitting in traffic and stuff like that. But when it comes to you know, takeoff and backing, can kind of be a little tricky with the you know, the jerking and all that stuff. But I think it's a good thing that they're doing i mean it gives you know something a little bit of both like manuals and automatics for everybody out here so. okay that's what's up what about uh what so you've been out here for a long time 15 years uh you say you plan on putting in another five uh being that you you know came out here what what are some of the what are some of the must-haves uh, that you think drivers, new drivers, should bring out on the road with them? Um, number one thing is an Atlas. Uh, GPSs are good, but they kind of they mess up just like any other electronics. But definitely an Atlas um, and probably, um, I would say something to do like, What's cooking, refrigerator, microwave, stuff like that? Because I mean, it gets expensive. All right, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. Is there before we get on up out of here, Aaron? And I do want to appreciate you coming on, sharing your experience with us out here, man. On uh, on uh, the Lockout Man podcast, I really do appreciate you. Um, is there is there anything within your fifteen years, man? And I, you know, I, I don't want to say you probably seen it all. But what is some of the craziest shit that you that you seen uh out here driving, man? Uh mainly sexual stuff. <laughs> you know, looking down and seeing people, you know, doing certain things in their car and stuff like that. But that's about like as far as fights, I don't think I've ever seen an actual fight. But just mainly like sexual you know, stuff like that. You did you give them the horn? <laughs> did you, yeah, you give you give them the horn. I uh, I I recently seen a, a female driving like like in the nude. Uh, you know, I I I just so happy to look down and there she is, all in the buff and shit. And I'm like, okay. You don't see that every day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I, don't, I don't think it was. I actually had um about three weeks ago. I did two times in one week up in Michigan and once down in Indiana. I had a, a, a lady that was giving me a topless show both times. And <laughs> I didn't think that stuff was still going on, but apparently it is. <laughs> wow. Maybe she's looking for a truck driver, trying to get that, try, trying to get your attention, bro. But you got to tell her. You got to be like, yo, I already, got, already got somebody at home, man. Thank you very much. But I appreciate it, man. All right, everybody. Big money care or big money Aaron, everybody. That's what's up, man. I, I appreciate you coming on, uh, chopping it up with me for a bit, man. Um. What uh, what 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 kind of what, what for new jacks that's coming out here? You know, like I said, you know, you you gave a few, you know, you gave a few tips, but what are what are some other tips that that you that you know that you can offer up for these uh, new jacks that that are thinking about coming out here? Um, just do your research and your homework when it comes to finding a company you go to and just, you know, when you get out here, take it easy and take it slow. Don't get in a hurry and stay in your ground with these dispatchers and stuff. Cause you know, they'll try to bully you to do stuff or try to, you know, 
can talk you into doing certain stuff. And most of them don't know jack of what goes on out here. So just kind of be stern with them and stay in your ground. Don't let them you know, tell you what to do. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. Again, Aaron, thank you very much uh, for coming on and chopping it up with me. If you guys want to come on and chop it up with uh, the Lockout Men on the Lockout Men show, you can do that. You can hit me up in the Gmail. That's Lockout Men Podcast at gmail.com. Or you could go over to Instagram and hit me up over there. You know what I'm saying? Let me know if you want to come on, talk, chill, whatever. We can we talk and chill over here. We do it all. You know what I'm saying? I want to thank you guys for listening and for watching. And if you like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell and that all button for more and for you to know when the uh, content comes out. <laughs> I want to thank you guys. But you want to know something? I, I want to tell you guys something. You want to you know what you guys should do? You know, he, he did say uh, bring an atlas. You know what I'm saying? You know, for you guys to come out here, grab Trucker's Path. The uh the app on your phone, Trucker's Path is also they they also have navigation now. So you always wanted to know about uh what app to get for truck navigation, Trucker's Path. Not only that, you will find out what all where all the parking spots is at, whether they full, whether they're whether they're uh whether they're uh, enough parking there is it going to be parking there for you when you get there truckers path is also the uh is also the app where you can also find cdl jobs at as well so if you guys don't have it make sure you download that app and get it going truckers path on that note everybody i want to thank you for watching i want to thank you for listening and thank you for being here and i will come back at you guys with another video. This is Lockout Men, and this is the Lockout Men Podcast. Peace.